Hello, my name is Ben Morton, veterinary orthopaedic surgeon at Chester Gates Animal Referral Hospital. In this short presentation, I will explain the mechanical rationale behind some popular surgeries that are used to treat the failure of the cranial cruciate ligament in dogs. The cranial cruciate ligament is one of two cruciate ligaments inside the knee. It performs a number of tasks. Firstly, it prevents overextension of the stifle joint. It also prevents inward rotation of the tibia relative to the femur. However, it is generally accepted that its most important role in dogs is to prevent the tibia from sliding forwards relative to the femur during weight bearing. The natural slope at the top of the tibia means that any force that compresses the stifle results in a forward shearing force. The cranial cruciate ligament usually resists this force, but when the ligament has failed, the tibia moves forward when the stifle is compressed, for example during weight bearing. Many popular surgical techniques aim to alter joint geometry to neutralise rather than resist the forces that cause this forward movement of the tibia. There are at least six of these techniques described, but they generally fall into one of two groups, tibial plateau levelling procedures or tibial tuberosity advancing techniques. The analogy often used to explain the mechanical basis of tibial plateau levelling procedures is to imagine the femur as a cart. The cart is positioned on a slope, which is the plateau of the tibia. There is a tendency for the cart to roll down the slope off the back of the tibia. The cranial cruciate ligament usually tethers the cart and prevents it from rolling. A tibial plateau levelling procedure, on the other hand, aims to level the slope and obviate the need for any tethering. For tibial tuberosity advancing techniques, it is the angle between the top of the tibia and the patella tendon that is relevant. Now imagine another cart, but this time the cart is the tibia. The cart is on rails and moves forwards and backwards very easily, but it is impossibly heavy because there is a femur and a dog above it. At the front of a cart is a lead rope which comes off at an angle. This rope represents the patella tendon. When the dog stands or moves or contracts the quadriceps muscle, it causes tension in the patella tendon. This equates to a vertical force applied to the lead rope. When a force like this is applied, in the absence of a functioning cranial cruciate ligament, the cart slides forwards until the rope is at 90 degrees to it. In a tibial tuberosity advancing technique, we essentially detach the front of the cart where the lead rope attaches, move it forward to a point where the lead rope is at 90 degrees and fix it back on to the rest of the cart. Now, when the vertical force is applied, the main body of the cart, which is the main part of the tibia, does not move. Chester Gates Animal Referral Hospital is a specialist-led veterinary centre in Cheshire, with easy access off the M56, the M53 and the A55. The orthopaedic department consists of myself, Professor John Innes and Francois Saulnier Troff. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. I hope that you found it useful.